Man, the team of fans, when I tell you episode two revitalized my love of Zach and Fatima after all the hell I had to sit through and endure with Sister Season 5. I don't know what else I could score the episode outside of a 15 out of 10. I know it seems like a high, high score, especially after last week I gave a 9 out of 10. But I think that the phenomenal emotional acting by DeVal really carried the episode. On top of that, you know, the first half of the episode, you could argue, was more comedic. But once Zach went over to see his mom and brother leading to the grocery store scene, which definitely was comedic. But then you get to the final scene where DeVal, or excuse me, uh, Zach and Fatima are sitting in the car outside of the house. It it, it just made, I, 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 it's been, I don't know how long since I've watched a, you know, probably since the team of season one. It's been so long since I've sat and watched one of these Tyler Perry episodes of any of his projects and have been really happy. You know, even when I watched episode one back on a Tuesday, when the theme song came on, I'm over here dancing like, hey, 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 watching these characters again. I'm loving it. So we pick up where we left off and look, the season two trailer really ruined what could have been a suspenseful moment. You know, episode one ended with Fatima talking about a side chick. This episode, we spent a good you know, six, seven minutes focusing on that. You know, Zach being in awe. Can't believe Fatima would recommend such a thing. But then, of course, it's revealed she's talking about that uh, blow-up doll or whatever. So, this, to me, worked a whole lot better in terms of tension and the comedic payoff compared to Sisters where Fatima had Joey stop by the house and lie about a nine-year-old son in order to give Zach a, you know, taste of his own medicine because, ha, now you know how it feels. This was executed much better. But like I said, the trailer ruined it, though. It did. Now, from there, you know, Zach, he just can't believe Fatima's doing this. You know, all the sex they've had up until this point And now all of a sudden you don't want to do it anymore like that. And, you know, what about when you start law school soon and we won't have time to, you know, sex it up like we are now. So from there, she mentions how (laughs) she has takeout. Look, hey, I love takeout my damn self. So Zach is feeling dejected. It's like, you know, I want dinner. You ain't cooking. I get takeout. I want sex and I'm not getting the, the kitty I want. You give me a blow up doll. So they're eating. And he's just, you know, like a kid who was told to eat their vegetables or you get no dessert. He's barely picking at the food, you know, Fatima's eating. Look, I get it. TV shows, you can't always, like, just go crazy with the food because of continuity and whatnot. And, you know, hey. But then again, he's going like plastic forks. First of all, Zach, uh, what you got against plastic forks, huh? Huh? Because I've been you, hey, paper plates. Plastic forks, it's what, it's my pleasure. What what did Pops say on Friday about catching dogs? It's my pleasure. Because I don't like washing dishes. But, um, you know, hey, even when I get my own spot, I'm still going to be using paper plates and uh, plastic forks. I mean, yeah, I guess if you entertain, folks. Well, the, hey, the people I know in Lynchburg, you know, when I was, uh, when, if we go to, you know, chill at each other's house and whatnot, paper plates and forks, shit. Okay, my bad. Maybe that's just my house. Well, you know, not my house because I only got one yet, but maybe that's just how I live. So he feels dejected and goes to the couch. This was the moment where I'm like, Fatima, you almost make me take back everything I said about you in Sister Season 5. But no, this is a separate show, so it doesn't count. But Fatima straight up says, oh, Zach, your feelings are hurt. Tell me what's wrong. She gets up from the dinner table to follow behind Zach and sits with him on the couch to discuss things. Do you know how refreshing it was to see that after the way she's acted throughout all of season five of Sisters? 
It's always about Fatima. It's always about how she feels about something. It Zach's feelings be damned. This gave me hope <laughs> that the Fatima of old was finally back. Yeah, she got a new hairstyle, a bit more of attitude, but at the same time, she still gives a crap about her man and his feelings. I loved it. So they have a discussion in regards to the whole not having sex thing. And like I said before, you know, Zach voices his feelings on, you know, what we got all his free time now, sex it up. And like, it, I think the most important thing he dropped was this from his mouth. Hey, it feels like since you got me, you've changed. Like the thrill really isn't there. Pretty much like the honeymoon phase is gone. But Fatima mentions, and this is how women think, and I can't fully judge them, but it's confusing as hell to men. So it's like you want me to want you, but I can't have you when I want you. It has to be when you want to. Now, you can make the argument this is like the feelings thing where, you know, oh, Fatima, when she wants to talk about something, drop everything and do it now. But when Zach wants to talk about something, she has to process it first. But given how sex crazy they've been, and as a person who has not engaged in the activity yet, I can't speak on, you know, if Zach is doing it too frequently or if it's like Lay's, you know, I bet you can't eat just one. And he talks about, you know, he just talking about Fatima like, you know, that BBD song, um, Do Me Baby. Fatima, what's wrong with you? Now all of a sudden you want to go cold turkey on sex when before it was like, hey, smack it up, flip it, rub it down. Oh, no. I mean, now all of a sudden you're putting a limit on how many times we do it. But, hey, she makes a point of being tired, I guess. But like she told Angela in episode one, maybe she feels some kind of way about herself because if she was really putting on Zach the way she's supposed to, he'd be too damn tired to do it like six, seven times, you know, in one day or one afternoon. So I don't know. So this is an interesting conversation. You know, it's a bit comedic, but I think the emotions are there. And like I said, seeing Fatima actually talk to Zach or talk with him instead of at him was amazing. So he gets a phone call. It's from his brother. And, you know, he talks about how his mom wants to see him. And um, I like Fatima in this scene. Now, part of me usually is like, you know, yeah, Fatima usually pushes things to happen. Even when Zach says he shouldn't do something. And then when it blows up, she gets mad at him. But this was a concern for Fatima. Like, hey, that's your mom. Go see her. Go go, go, go see her. You, favorite part. You want me to come with you? There you go. And then um, she mentions her folks. Like, hey. I think Dan, I think it was uh, Zach who mentioned, so talking about my parents, what about yours? So I'm going to meet yours. Fatima drops a big bomb. Like, we obviously knew about the whole crime family thing, but the fact that her parents don't operate the way Zach would think, and as a result, the way they've moved rather quickly, like her living with uh, Zach and being engaged, ain't really going to fly with them. Not to mention... Fatima has never once mentioned Zach to her parents. Jeremy, Zach didn't do it to his family. Well, Zach has a lot of reasons why he doesn't talk to his family. Just saying. So, yeah. Yeah. Neither one of them have told him about, you know, or told their parents about their significant other. But at the same time, it looks like Fatima's family has a whole lot of rules and regulations that Zach's doesn't. So it's one of those things where Zach could possibly be in danger if he doesn't make a first impression. And remember, based on the preview, Fatima's mom was the first thing she sees him carrying Deja. So um, from there, we got Zach going over to, you know, pretty much a rough neighborhood, sees his mom. Well, he sees his brother, but... I think he walks past his mom. Like, I don't know if he did that to be passive aggressive. Like, oh, yeah, I didn't see you there. Just like you never saw me growing up. But, you know, she's sitting there and she gets up. Uh, I was reminded uh, that this is the same actress that portrayed the mom or the wife on Medea Family Funeral. Uh, the guy that died, his wife. And then she also played a brief role in assisted living for a few episodes before the character, you know, died. But... Yeah, she's a very, very, very talented and just extensive resume. <laughs> so it's pretty cool how this particular actress, she's been on the big screen, great big screen in a Tyler Perry film. She's been on a small screen in a Tyler Perry show, and now she's on 
the number one Tyler Perry show on a on a streaming service. And, you know, it was a team of season one. What was it? Number one show on BET Plus and Amazon the first week. And this time, you know, since they're dropping a couple episodes at once, I don't know how the ratings are going to be. But I think once all the first half of the season is, you know, um, done, that's when ratings will probably go up higher. But yeah, th th this episode. Wow. So we meet Gladys and, um, you know, I've talked about her in at least like 50 videos at this point. We all know she's a deadbeat mom. She's, you know, gone through a lot and she's an addict. So, Zach, you know, this is a thing people need to realize. And look. I wasn't the victim of any sort of like sexual abuse or anything growing up. So, you know, I'm just putting that out there. So I just want to make sure I don't cross any boundaries. But and, and I'm not trying to put my family on blast. But I think growing up, I was emotionally stunted because anytime I tried to express myself, I was always like, you know, verbally beat down. Like, you know, if I'm mad about something, like if I felt like I was being yelled at or something for no reason, I tried to speak up. That resulted in like, you know, more aggression from parental figures. So I still deal with that shit today. And somebody I was talking with is like, man, Zach got this money, this confidence. His mom, you know, never really been there for him. So why would he kind of back down when she was like, I'll slap the shit out of you, boy, if you disrespect me. When you are traumatized as a child, that shit stays with you. I know this is a weird example, but you all know me. I love anime. Plus yesterday in the mail, I got Dragon Ball super superhero the blu-ray dvd set and i gotta watch it but in the broly movie if you're an anime fan you'll get this reference if not stand with me for like 45 seconds <gasps> dragon ball super broly the movie you had broly incredibly powerful he had a bracelet or a necklace um on him that his father placed on him as a child like a restraining device and whenever broly got to you know rage just filled with rage and out of control his dad would press a button and it would shock him like an electric shock and he, they're saying, so they're super powerful, but Broly's just way, way, way too powerful. So whenever he got out of control, his dad will put him in line with the press of a button. Even as an adult in the film, when his dad threatens to shock him, Broly looks freaked out. Yes, this dude, way too powerful for that electric shock to even really damage him. But since he's been going through that, since he was a child, mentally, it's a fear tactic. Even though he's stronger than the discipline that's dealt out to him. When you go through certain stuff as a child, it will fuck you up. It doesn't matter how successful you get. It doesn't matter how old you get. If you if you are face-to-face -face with the person that traumatized you emotionally, sometimes even physically, you regress. The way Zach was acting around his mom... This true and, and his brother, I think I mentioned this in my episode one review when uh, Jeremiah showed up at the barbershop. Just like Veronica and Jeffrey on the haves and the have nots in the first few seasons of the show, you know, Jeffrey, you know, oh, he was almost a college graduate. I think he needed like what a couple more credits to get his degree. He, he you know, he was pretty successful in terms of his, his field, you know, doing well as a counselor at Veronica's rehab facility and whatnot. Very confident in terms of, you know, his abilities. Not his sexuality, though. But whenever his mom would come around, he would turn into like a toddler. His um, Candace even pointed this out a few times. That's why Zach was acting the way he was around his mom. So basically, his mom and his brother are on the verge of being kicked out. And he's like, I just gave Jeremiah a check. What happened to that money? His mom couldn't look him in the eye. And he knows the one reason they're getting kicked out. It has nothing to do with money, but the fact they're slinging drugs. His mom doesn't want to, you know, admit to it, but Zach sees it. Hell, he even sees Jeremiah, you know, exchanging with somebody in front of his own eyes. And from there, you know, she's like, we your family. And, you know, get your brother. I mean, at first, like, we don't want none. I just wanted to see you. And then it turned into, hey, let me hold some money for some groceries. Get your brother a truck. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just wanted to see me now. You're talking about money and now you're talking about giving him a truck. What's the point of getting Jeremiah a truck because he wants to start like a moving business? No, we don't. He, he'll be moving some, all right, but it ain't going to mean anything legal. And then he's going to lose that truck quicker than he gets it. So from there, he takes his mom to uh, the grocery store because his mom's like, don't forget your family. Trust and believe I can relate to that shit. But anyway, um, they go to the grocery store. She likes the car and she wants the money because she'll go in the store and just, you know, get what she has to get and go. But no, 
Zach is like, tell me what you need. I'll go in the store. No, 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 no. Give me the money. And then Zach is going with her. So they go in the store. And um, <laughs> this is where things get funny. So his mom goes to get some stuff. Mm-hmm. And he runs into an ex of his named Connie. Now, Connie still got the hots for Zach. This is pretty much the equivalent of seeing somebody you haven't seen from high school after you've moved away. And then you come back for like a holiday or something. And that that's Zach. So, Zach is actually on the phone with Fatima because Fatima's calling to check on her to make sure everything's going okay. And, um, you know, yeah, we're at the grocery store and I'm... I'm okay. And then Fatima... In, in love, Zach, I can tell you're not fine, but look, yeah, I, look, I'll be home soon. That's what I'm talking about. Fatima, give it a fuck about Zach. All right, so Connie comes up. Hey, who's that? Oh, no, it's just some guy I know from uh, around the way. I'll, I'll talk to you later. So Connie was apparently one of the many women Zach had back in the day, but one of, if not the only one, he truly, truly, truly had feelings for. And, you know, Connie knows Zach is happy to see her because she looks down, but he hides it behind some juice. And he mentions how, you know, he's engaged and whatnot, but Connie, you know, she makes it clear she still wants a piece of Zach. And my mom, oh yeah, that's my mom. Uh, I, I, okay, can I have your phone number? No, no, no. Um, Yeah, I'm actually engaged and I'm cool. I'm cool. All right, nice seeing you, Connie. So <laughs> they go their separate ways. And sadly, Zach sees the basket and he knows his mom is left. So, uh, from there, Fatima's in the bathroom. I think she was getting out of the tub, if I'm not mistaken, or the shower. And she's on the phone with Angela. And um, they're talking about the Paul situation. Angela's like, you know, he was looking at you. And then, you know, Fatima's like, look, you need to check him out yourself. Then get his phone number because I'm, I'm good. But, you know, Angela, uh, Fatima asked about, you know, Angela and uh, Bryce. But, you know, she's still avoiding him. But it is what it is. And from there, um, oh, also earlier in the episode, Fatima did ask Zach about the Bryce situation. I think that's when they were at the dinner table. And it's like, it, look, it was awkward as hell. And she's like, yeah, y'all got to have that talk eventually. Yeah. So um, she notices that Zach pulled up and she goes down to talk to him. And in an emotional scene and man, uh, Zach pretty much asked Fatima, you know, do you love me? And she's like, yeah, Zach, of course. Well, what's wrong? And he tells a story about, you know, how when he was six and his mom left him outside of a gas station and he was screaming, mommy, mommy, looking for her. And then he winded up finding her, giving head to some random truck driver in the back. And that pretty much messed with his mind as a kid, because earlier when they were in the grocery store, Zach literally reverted back to that six year old looking for his mom. And she took that money and left because I think earlier in the episode, she mentioned how, you know, I'm doing better now. I'm on meth. And then, you know, who knows what she did with that money, but I think we all know what she did with that money. So, um, from there, Fatima says how, look, Zach, I'm not her. I could be cynical here if I wanted to be. Well, Fatima, how many times has Zach, uh, Zach said, I'm not in, but you still, you know, doubted him no i'm not going to do that here even though i could i'm not but she does mention look we we trying to get our situation together start a family at some point you got to talk to somebody you got because i can't be the person to help you get through this because i'm not like qualified but you do need to talk with somebody about this and zach says he will and this was great and sh she's like let's go in the house like no i want to sit here for a little while and instead of leaving, she is going to sit there with him until he's ready to go inside. Folks, this was amazing. This was amazing. Can't wait until next week. Acting was great. Because some people, and I, 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 I did a separate video on this, but some people were like, Jeremy, um, is it just me or DeVal and Crystal's chemistry off? And I said, I mean, when I look at sisters... Season five, yes, but I don't think it's the fault of the actors. It's the writing because there have been a small handful of Zatima de argument scenes in like season three and four, 
But even those, if you go back and look at them, they felt kind of out of place. Like, you know, whenever Fatima would go off on Zach or vice versa, like when um, Hayden sent that voice message to Zach, having him thinking Fatima was playing him. Or, you know, um, that one episode in early season three when Zach was trying to sneak out of the apartment and Fatima just gave him attitude for no reason. Those are the moments where I'm like, yeah, it kind of feels weird because we're not used to seeing them like this. So it's almost like the actors don't really know what to do with the scenes because why are they blowing? I, I don't know. I wish I knew what was going through the Val and Crystal's minds when they read the script. And it's like, yo, we Tyler got us fighting again. What, what's going on here? So, no, I don't think the chemistry was ever gone. I felt like the writing and sisters just really threw off their dynamic. But this episode really made it feel like we're back to the Zack and Fatima of old. Yeah, there's still a lot of shit they got to go through, but they're going to ride through it together. And no, I will not quote the theme song because then I'll start breaking out and singing it. Love ain't perfect. No, I'm not doing that. But no, um, this episode, like I said at the beginning, if there was an episode that kind of revitalized my interest in Tyler Perry content after months of mediocrity, this was the episode. Highly recommend it. I know for those who are like, I'm going to wait until BET Plus at least has the first 10 episodes and then I'll watch the first half of Zatima. I understand, but fine. Well, I don't want to say fine anyway, because I want to help the numbers for the show. If you can like borrow a password or something for somebody from someone, you know, who has BET Plus do it. Episode one. Yeah, it, it was good. But this episode two. It was phenomenal. I don't care. Watch episode two of Zatima season two. It was amazing. Also, somebody I was talking to said that, man, I don't know. Tyler's writing feels weird. Like, you know, the whole, I thought this was supposed to be a comedy. This came out of nowhere. I respectfully disagreed because there was, in, there was build up to this emotional moment. It didn't just come out of nowhere. Like with Zach in the car crying. What? It didn't just come out of nowhere. We had build up. In the previous episode, last season, folks, this was great. All right, that's all I got. Episode two, you knocked it out of the ballpark, even though Deja wasn't in it. But yeah, this episode was great. Thanks so much for tuning in. Oh yeah, also, I don't think we've seen the last of Connie either. Just throwing it out there. All right, like and subscribe, follow me on social media, and I'll catch you in the next one.